Hello and welcome to a managerial special from the Orange Foot Podcast. I'm Craig Tavern and with me as always is Mr. Daniel Cody. For like the gazillion time, we are here to talk about Watford and they have appointed a new head coach and that is Forest Green Rover's own Rob Edwards for the 2022-2023 season. A brief statement from Watford has come out and said, uh, Watford Football Club is delighted to confirm the appointment of Rob Edwards as his new coach, effective after the conclusion of the current 2021-22 season. Rob had a contract, uh, contractual uh, provision allowing him to leave Forest Green Rovers at any time to discuss employment opportunities at other clubs. And the Hornets are delighted to confirm our discussions concluded today. However, there has been a lot of controversy with this appointment of Rob Edwards to Watford because Forest Green themselves have come out and saying they've heard nothing from Watford Football Club. Forest Green said in a statement, Forest Green Rovers confirmed that the departure of head coach Rod Edwards. Rob was a key part of the team that gained promotion to League One this season. We're disappointed that, that our support, loyalty, honesty towards Rob has been repaid in this way, with negotiations taking place behind our backs. We have no contact from Watford, but in any event, this kind of behaviour gives football a bad name. We thank Rob for all his work at Forest Green Rovers. Forgive him the manner of the departure and wish him well. Well, this is uh, highly unusual to come out with uh, two statements from both football clubs. This feels like a very Nathan Jones-esque to Stoke City. Immediate thoughts on Rob Edwards leaving League Two winning Forest Green to go to Premier League relegated Watford. You basically took the words out of my mouth. It's very Nathan Jones to Stoke-esque and I'm sure the Watford fans won't like that because it's a Luton analogy, but it's very similar the way it's happened. My immediate thoughts boil down to two things. Look, in terms of step up in stature of club, in size of club, probably in financial reward, which we have to be fair, most Watford managers historically haven't seen out their contracts. It's an opportunity for him that will probably be life-changing. So completely understand it. The way it's been done, oh, it drives me nuts because he's just won League Two with Forest Green. They've been in that league for ages. They're going into League One for the first time. He could have gone out as a hero if he'd just done it with a little bit of class. That's all it needed. And I know I saw Dale Vince on Sky Sports earlier, and we'll try and not to make this too Forest Green centric, but he is, for whether you agree or disagree with most of his opinions, he's one of the most open and honest owners we've got in the EFL. And he was very forthright in saying that he's not actually annoyed that he's taking this opportunity. It's the right one. It, well, maybe it's not the right one for him, but it's an opportunity he probably couldn't refuse. But from Watford's point of view and from his point of view, I felt that he owed the club one for giving him that opportunity just to say, look, I'm having these discussions. It's not a hard thing to do, is it? And that side of it frustrates me. So we'll have to put aside the football inside, which I'm sure we'll talk about in a moment. It doesn't surprise us from Watford, sadly. And I want to get this clear. We've been balanced with the manager specials before. I know we're Luton fans, but we have to be fair here. And I'm going to say this honestly from a Watford point of view. I don't really know what's happened the last year because we were both wrong on Cisco last time they were in the championship. And at the start of this Premier League season, I was actually a little bit worried looking across at our rivals thinking they've got one hell of a head coach. They've got one hell of a team. And they're going to be all right. And they're going to become a solid Premier League club. Then they sacked him in mid-table and it's all gone horribly wrong from there. So, look, it's nothing new with Watford. We're used to doing three a season. And three days after coming back to the Championship, here we are. Well, it's now a Championship club. They got relegated uh, at the weekend, uh, losing to Crystal Palace. And um, But that same weekend, Forest Green won the League Two title. And uh, obviously, congratulations to Forest Green on winning League Two. Yeah. we get that out of the way. Let's talk about Rob Edwards, the head coach. He came in as a Forest Green Rovers manager uh, last, uh, well, in 2021, shall I say. And yeah, he's done a remarkable job. It wouldn't percentage for 45%. But let's be honest, as great as achievements have seen Forest Green get, uh, win the league, they were winning this league handsomely come February. And they only just won the league on goal difference. Yeah, and it was a favour from Port Vale against Exeter that did it on the final day. But I think that's the thing, isn't it? He's shown very good acumen in his coaching career so far. He obviously worked at Wolves under people like Kenny Jacket, experienced pros in the game, had a very small interim stint there. And then built himself up from non-league. He's worked with England youth sides. He's got a very good coaching pedigree. I think the thing that serves him well, perhaps coming over to Watford, is that he's worked under a director of football model at Forest Green. He's not been 
in charge of absolutely everything from top to bottom. And he's certainly not going to be at Watford. We know that. But it's a big step up. I mean, you can say Forrest Green from Telford was a big step up league wise and he rose to that. He's done a fantastic job, whether they did it on goal difference or not, having been so far clear. He won League Two and we saw at the top of that table this year, it was so competitive. And for as much as they did drift towards the end, they're probably the only team in that league this season that's never looked in danger of being outside the top three. So we've got to give him credit for that. But this is a big step up. It's a club where I think the politest way we can put it is they're incredibly volatile with their treatment of head coaches. And it doesn't matter what your reputation is. It doesn't matter what your style of football is. If you lose five or six games, you're in big trouble. And it's a very different demographic of players. It's a very different demographic of supporters. It's a different area. It's going to be a learning curve. And I don't know how it's going to end, to be brutally honest. But I think probably the same way as most Watford managers. We went to watch Forest Green live um, away at St Albans in the FA Cup first round. And they played some really good stuff. Just, I know they lost the game and that, that's the magic of the FA Cup for you. But you can see why they were at the top of the league. Yeah, they're, they're a very good side. I mean... They didn't really budge from those top two positions all season. What I liked about them is when they got to that nitty gritty stage towards the end of the season and they were starting to struggle. You mentioned that obviously they'd been playing good football before then. They did grind out some one nil away wins where they just got crosses into the box and scored the goal and then sat back and were disciplined. So he's shown versatility in his coaching. He's obviously got a very decent record. I know his win percentage is 45, which you might say is good, but not spectacular. He only lost 10 games. A lot of the rest were draws, which, again, when you're coming into the championship, the most competitive league in the world, arguably, you've got to be able to turn those defeats into draws. That's the difference between, well, we've seen it with sides at the top this year, the difference between eighth and ninth and the top four or five. The, the one thing I don't get, Craig, is I don't know what the expectations are going to be next year. I really don't know because they're going to be coming down with Norwich and then one of, you would presume, Burnley, Everton and... Leeds, Leeds down there all of whom are going to be expecting to go back up if they go down you've got teams that haven't gone up this year that have had poor years the likes of West Brom who are in mid-table you've got sides in the playoffs who are going to miss out but have finished the season well under new coaches like one of Sheffield United and Forest for example and we're going to have new managers at other clubs that are established and fighting in the top half like QPR and Blackburn so I really don't know what the expectation is at Watford next year because if they I if they think they're going to be a top two club again, I don't see how Rob Edwards is going to be able to have them up there in the first 10 or 15 games. Given that he's a coach who generally builds a playing style, and I know he's only spent one season in each of his last two jobs, but I just, I find, I'm baffled. I find it really weird, this one. This feels like a bit of a change of direction from a Watford point of view, and I'm not sure this is the way to go either. Yeah, I don't know if it's the way to go, but... Going back to your point, it has to be a change of direction because if they're expecting the same bounce back ability and result, I don't think this is the right appointment for it. So I can only lend to the fact that maybe, and let's hope from a neutral footballing point of view and for the fans of the of Watford FC, that they are learning that lesson. Actually, they've come back down the last two times. So let's see if we can build a different way and build something that's going to last rather than having a a hash together group of players being rotated between the three sides that the ownership own and hoping for the best result. So if this is a long-term appointment, it could be the right one. But in the short term, I don't see that they're going to be able to run away in the top two next year with this appointment and with the current playing squad, because there is going to have to be some turnover in the players as well, isn't there? There's obviously a few players out of contracts, a few high earners in this Watford side. Mr Sissoko is obviously a World Cup winner with France. I can't see him being in the in the championship next season. Um, and then you've got uh, Ben Foster's 38, 39. Is, he, is that him done? Ishmael Assar, obviously he's been linked to higher clubs in the Premier League for 25, 30 mil. Um, I can't see him being another year in the in, in the championship like he did uh, the previous season. So it, uh, there's a, it has to be a way of a, a bit of a clear out for Watford. Do you feel like the players will listen to someone who's only coached in League Two and considering the champ, how big step, as you said, the championship is, do you feel like they're going to respect them? I hope so. I mean, it shouldn't come down to that, really, should it, in a professional dressing room? It's hard to tell because you never really know what's going on at Watford. We saw last time they were in the championship with the first manager where they just turned. And we saw it this season to an extent with West Brom and Valerian Ishmael as well, where it just turned suddenly. 
And you do always wonder when it's a manager making that step up. We've seen plenty of examples of it working in the championship. We've seen a fair few where it's gone wrong. I don't think the Watford players have a choice because, I mean, to this, to an extent, the second half of this season, the fans have turned on them more than Roy Hodgson, probably in the second half of this year. And I think that's fair because these players, they have at times, particularly in home games, given up, they've got a, an atrocious home record in the Premier League. So I think they have to listen to him. I think they have to give him a chance. I think the fans will get behind him. He's a player who, to be fair to him, has spent a lot of his career in the Premier League and Championship, got promoted from the Championship with Blackpool via the playoffs, got promoted with Norwich, I think, the year after as well. So he's a player who has been there and done it from the playing side. But from the coaching side, it's going to be interesting. I think that's probably the most key aspect of it, is are the players going to get on board with what he wants to do? Because it's a very different style to what Roy Hodgson plays. It's a very different style to what Ranieri was playing. And I think that's going to be the hardest part of this. Well, normally I say, how do you see Watford do next season? The question is, how many months is Rob Edwards going to get? And it's sad that that has to be the question, isn't I don't, it? It's, it's, it's a horrible question to ask, but it's, it's just typical Watford. It is. It's sad. And I, I wonder now, because the Watford fans never used to mind because it was, well, actually the method's still working, which fair enough, it was at the time, but it isn't now. And I wonder if that's changed the mindset of the Watford fans at all. I'd be interested to know. I hope he succeeds. I hope he does well. My instinct tells me that if he's not in the top two or in the chasing pack for the top two points wise by November, he'll probably be gone. I know we were having a chat about this before you said about October time. I think what we've got to look at this year, Craig, is don't forget the championship from the second week of November stops for the World Cup. So I think we're going to see an awful lot of manager turnovers in that four weeks where the championship's essentially on pre-season break again. So I think if they're not right up in the mix by that Winter World Cup, unfortunately, Rob Edwards will probably be gone. And I don't think, based on the Forest Green owner's interview today, he'll be too upset by that. But what a sad way for all of this to end. And I'm just, I'm really baffled. I think that's the one way I can sum this up. And I, I'd love to know what Watford fans think. I'm not digging as a Luton fan. I'm genuinely intrigued. It feels like a Barnsley thing with... Um... Oh, with Marcus um, Shop. We got it last Shop. summer. It's, we said yeah, almost the same. It's so, it's so left field. I, I don't know. I, I generally do think, and, and it's not fair on Robert, he's obviously done a brilliant job this season with um, Forrest Green. I just feel that like he might be a bit out of his depth. I think he needed that League One just to gain a little bit of experience. Obviously, he's done a remarkable job in League Two. I think he needed that experience in League One. See how it is. You look at all the teams that I've missed out on the playoffs, as you said, and, and there's so many good teams missing out on the playoffs. Watford, I feel might struggles to start with. We'll see what they bounced back well with Cisco last time in the championship, but I don't think you can afford to start badly in the championship because look at Nottingham Forest, for example, they started badly in the championship and yes, granted they got the playoffs, but they could have easily been in that top two. So I can't see it lasting long for Rob Edwards. And it's a shame. It's a shame because he's obviously he's left Forest Green in, in bad terms. Um, not the way he should be doing it because he's, we had an interview saying he's looking forward to the Forest Green in League One. So something's happened in that time for him to swing to go to Hertfordshire. So we'll have to wait and see on that. But that is our thoughts on the appointment of Rob Edwards as head coach of Watford. Uh, let us know in the comments what you think of this decision and how you think he will get on. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the Honest Football Podcast, and you can follow us on Twitter at Honest Football Free. And we'll see you next time.